first thing we're gonna do is make our mushroom filling over here I've got chopped onion with chopped mushrooms finely diced and cooked in a bit of oil then I'm gonna add my garlic at the very very end when the mushrooms have softened and cook this for further five minutes just to give the flavor then I transfer everything into my food processor if you don't have a food processor don't worry you can just use the filling as it is and make sure you season it with spices such as salt pepper paprika i've added a little bit of chili and a little bit of oil i'll leave all the measurements below and that's our filling done now we're gonna make our dough so add water into your pan together with salt and pepper pepper is optional <laughs> and wait till your water starts to boil once it starts to boil you can add your gluten-free flour inside and then mix everything together until the moisture has been absorbed by the flour so it will not take long it's quite a quick process so you want to be pretty fast once everything is absorbed and uh, you want to mix it together until it comes through and then add your olive oil inside and then mix everything again one more time until all the ingredients are incorporated so you can see the mixture becomes nice and sticky now you can leave the mixture to cool down and if you don't have a stand mixer you can then mix it with your hand if you do have a stand mixer just add it inside and knead the dough with a dough hook for about five minutes or so it will not only cool it down but will also incorporate all the ingredients together until it becomes nice and smooth just like this so you want to take it off the dough hook it's still a bit warm so just be really careful and the dough is very very sort of springy and elastic and if you've never worked with gluten-free flour you will find it is very very different from normal flour <laughs> add your gluten-free flour onto your counter and then add your dough on top make sure you add flour throughout the process of kneading as the dough is very very sticky and the dough is still very warm so what i did i've just folded that in and i've left it to cool down for about 30 minutes or so and you might want to do the same unless you have gloves or something heat proof <laughs> when your dough has cooled down slightly it will still be warm it's very very sticky so you need to add a lot of flour onto your rolling pin and onto your dough and just kind of work it through and roll it out as you go in stages you might want to do half the dough at a time um, just to make sure it's nice and even at all the stages for your dumplings but just be very very gentle and keep rolling it out it's it's so easy to break this dough so you have to be very gentle <laughs> once you've rolled out your dough use a cookie cutter or a ring for your pelmeni shape you can also use a cup if you don't have anything like this anything really to create the shape <laughs> And then add one teaspoon of your wild mushroom filling inside, kind of press it together and pinch from the top going all the way to the sides and from the other side and then kind of double pinch on top to make sure it's nice and sealed, stretch it a little bit and fold in your dumpling. And the dough is pretty easy to stick, it's very very sticky and works really really well and your dumpling should look just like that. Now the tip I have is that you need to flip your gluten-free uh, dough over. So once you've rolled it out in a counter, if you can see, it's quite dry on top, but it's very sticky at the bottom. So you always flip it through and put the filling into the sticky part because then it will be much easier to pinch the dough together like I'm doing here in the video. If you do it the other way around, you will struggle to fill the filling and seal the dough. So make sure you flip it over <laughs> as it dries out, of course. So yeah, just repeat the process with all the dumplings. Um, you will definitely get better as you do more of them. It's just a matter of practice. And you know, once you've done so many dumplings, you will become a dumpling pro. <laughs> so keep re-rolling the dough that you have left over and just using it until you have enough and until you finish with all the dumplings and as you can see i take my dough flip it over and then seal it from all the sides again 
this is just a quick video to show you how to do it <laughs> so once all your dumplings are done place them onto a board they freeze really well if you don't want to eat them straight away um, we're gonna cook some now so take a deep pot add your vegetable stock inside and then you can also add a bay leaf peppercorns whatever else you like in your um, in your broth let's say and once the water is boiling you want to drop your gluten-free dumplings pelmeni inside and we're literally not going to cook them for very long as soon as they start to float they are done and make sure you don't overcrowd your pan so you don't want to cook more than 10 pelmeni in one bowl some of them might come off as in the shape but that's just because it wasn't sealed properly so be really careful when you cook them but to be honest, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the taste. Here I've got my mushrooms that I've decided to fry in some garlic oil and serve it together with the dumplings. I think it adds extra flavor to these vegan pelmeni and just kind of more filling, I would say, as well. You can drizzle a bit of olive oil and enjoy it. And guys, I'm going to show you how it looks inside. Look at that really really delicious filling inside very creamy the dough is very soft and gentle and it's really great for those who have gluten allergy or for those that are vegan if you're craving some russian food this is a good alternative for you or your family members i hope you tried this recipe guys can't wait to see your photos enjoy mm -hmm.